Hello and welcome to FAM, the online edition. It is I, Mr. Davey, and Michelle will be joining us a little bit later um, to help talk about today's artist, Joan Mitchell. As you can see, I have some of her artwork behind me, um, and there's a picture of Joan uh, back in the day. She's no longer with us. Um, she was born uh, February 12th, 1925, and passed away October 30th, 1992. Uh, she was an American uh, printer, or sorry, painter and printmaker, who also worked in pastels and made other works on paper. She was an active participant in the 1950s in the New York School of Artists. Uh, she was a native of Chicago, excited about that. You know, being from Chicago myself. Uh, she's associated with the American Abstract Expressionist Movement, as you can clearly tell. Um, and even though she lived in France for much of her career, Mitchell was one of the era's few female painters to gain critical and public acclaim her paintings and drawings and the edition, edition prints can be seen in major museums and collections around the world. So let's talk a little bit about her art. I absolutely love this artist. Um, there's so much passion, so much expressionist expression or passion, emotion in these pieces that I'm just super excited that we're going to make some of this sort of art today. Um, this is probably one of my favorites that, that I saw as I was helping research uh, Joan. Um, this is uh, actually a landscape of a city. And you didn't even have to tell me that. I saw that in this painting. I, I, I absolutely just love that. And again, uh, you know how I like to show you kind of what the size of the paintings are? I, she painted huge. I mean, you can kind of see that here in this with her beside her paintings. But I mean, this is like the bottom of the floor. That's the ceiling area. I mean, these things are huge paintings. They are not small things. And she also liked to work um, in panels. And we've done, you've seen me do that before in a few fans where I've done multiple panel pieces. So guess what? We're gonna be do some, doing some of that today. This is a four panel piece. Uh, this is a three and this is a two. And the, this is a two panel piece. I think that's a, yeah, that's a two panel piece. But what's really cool that I noticed with, with her paintings, like some people will, will paint across or create art across all four panels or all three or all two, like I've done in the past. Um, but these are each individual painting paintings because you can also look, they do not cross over. And, I, and the same thing with this one and this one, they don't cross over to the other uh, canvas, which I find absolutely fascinating. I like to, when I, when I do something in, uh, with multiple panels, I like to incorporate some aspect of the art across all, all the panels while leaving stuff. But um, yeah, I just, I really, really, really just, I know there's something about it. Um, somebody looked at it and said it looked very, like, very much like Jackson Pollock, of course, because it's expressionism and abstract. But I don't know, I, I think she's a lot different than, than Pollock. Um, the patches of color are bigger. Um, it's not as chaotic or, or as fluid as, as a Pollock. I don't know, there's just something about it. Um, so she used the colors because she, you know, she goes from bright colors here, 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 and then to some really muted colors. So I mean, her, her palette is all over the place, which I absolutely um, I love with her art. So what are we gonna need today for today's project? Well, you're gonna need more than one piece of paper. Um, we're, we're, I'm going to be working on a piece that's going to be three, three pieces big, um, pieces of paper. I'm going to use eight and a half by 11. Uh, you're going to need something to make art with. So it could be crayons, it could be markers, it could be paint if you want to do that. I'm going to be using uh, pastel. And you're also going to want something uh, to time yourself. So you give yourself uh, time with each panel or when you're adding the panels, but you'll see what, what we're talking about, um, why, we, why we do the art and Miche tells us more about her. Um, I'm gonna be working on a three minute uh, timer for the three panels, but we'll get more, get into that a little bit more. So go ahead, um, pause, gather your uh, supplies, and we'll see you again in just a moment. Hello and welcome back to FAM. Um, it's me, Mr. Davey again, and I have Miche with me. Um, and I wanted to show you a piece where her art kind of transcends both pieces. So you can see like right here, this red line crosses and there are a few other examples here. But like when you're making your pieces, because um, you're going to, want to use at least two pieces of paper, if not more, you can make two pieces that kind of go together or you can make a, a piece of art that spans different pages. 
But I'm gonna do something a little different here is I'm gonna time myself and give myself three minutes uh, per panel. So I'm gonna do three pieces um, and I'm going to continuously add to the painting as I, add, as I add pieces of paper. And it'll be interesting to decide if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna add to the right or to the left or have this be my first piece of paper start, be the right or the left side. You know, it's gonna be really interesting to see which way the art takes me as we go along. And Michelle's gonna tell us a little bit more about Joan um, as I um, attempt this piece of art. And again, like I said, I'm gonna use some oil pastels. So take it away, Miss Shea. As Mr. Davey mentioned, uh, Joan Mitchell, she lived from 1925 to 1992. Um, she was a American uh, painter and printmaker. She also worked in pastel and did a lot of works on uh, large canvas as he showed some of those examples but also um, paper as well. Definitely large paper, as you also saw in one of the pictures where she was sitting next to her paper and how huge that paper was compared to her. And the time that she was active um, was a really interesting and very busy time for artists, uh, especially in America, because it was the 1950s um, in the New York School of Artists, where um, it's a lot of uh, great abstract painters, expressionists, um, really, uh, had their claim to fame then um, as you know art was changing both in America and Europe um, and she actually even though she was a part of that American movement um, she went back and forth from France um, to America uh, like I said she was born in Chicago um, so she was a lot that area but also lived in France for much of her career later on and um, she was uh, also, as Mr. Davis said, one of the few female artists of that time that uh, was very um, skilled and that was noticed both with art critics and um, the public. Um, so she was very, during her time, um, you know, she, she, she was noticed for her talent and her genius, um, which is always great when artists can experience that uh, when they're alive and not long after, you know, they've passed away. Um, she studied uh, in Massachusetts and the Art Institute of Chicago and got her bachelor's and master's in fine arts. I love the Art Institute. Such an awesome place to visit. So if you're from Chicago, I highly recommend it. And um, something that was very interesting about her is that she um, actively knew and spent time, visited the studios or homes of uh, other um, contemporaries of her time, uh, such as William de Kooning um, and Franz Klein. Um, that also lived in that area, other New York school painters, um, they would, you know, visit, have dinner at her studio. One day maybe they'd use their studio. So, you know, she was actively, you know, in the, in the ring with those artists. You know, it wasn't, she wasn't, you know, regarded differently or much differently by the other artists as, you know, well, she's a woman, her art is different. Um, she was, you know, she was getting that firsthand knowledge along with them. And um, her art from 1950 uh, was very much abstract, as the examples uh, you've seen. Um, and her, the artist that she knew kind of uh, influenced her uh, kind of ideas when she was painting. Um, her early oils uh, were kind of influenced by de Kooning, um, like huge gestures. So she'd put, you know, if you're drawing um, on a huge piece of paper, you're gonna use your entire arm, call that like gesture drawing, oh. you're moving through it. Time All for right. me to have another piece of paper. All right, he's reached the first piece of paper. Yes. All right, um, looks pretty cool. And see, where was I, sorry. <laughs> um, she was very, she moved like with, you know, a lot of form, she was using her own, um, you know, body, uh, kind of just with the gestures, the pieces were so big that she was moving back and forth and kind of focusing on how um, she would move the brush or um, pastels across the paper or uh, canvas. And um, she used uh, lots of colors, especially um, in the mid 50s. Um, and she does this throughout her career. Uh, there's a painting called um, To the, I think, it's something about a ladybug, I'm not quite sure, but in the 50s, but she used a lot of big swatches of color because um, it reminded her, it was her feelings and memories. Those are the colors she picked as she painted um, when she, uh, you know, feelings about places, maybe feelings about where she grew up, 
feelings about uh, her time, uh, visits to France, things like that. She, a lot of her artwork is based off of the feelings. That's the why the colors she picks. Um, same thing with music, you know, it gives her certain feelings. That's what she liked to use um, in many of her pieces when she was making them. Um, she was uh, in the Artist Club, um, so shows that were also uh, joined by uh, Jackson Pollock, um, Hans Hoffman, uh, her friends that were there, um, they thought, you know, oh, wow, she's amazing. You know, we definitely have to include her with these things. Um, despite, you know, even though she's a female artist, uh, it didn't matter. They um, respected her work as just as she respected theirs. And it's kind of like they all kind of influenced their arts and tried different things throughout the years. Um, she started spending more time in France traveling um, in the late 50s and had solo exhibitions uh, both in the States and France, which is pretty amazing. Um, and she kind of, uh, she still painted very energetically, um, but her images were very slow, kind of built over time, um, kind of like what Mr. Davies doing or in some of the other pictures, like the uh, cityscape that she had. It wasn't just random. It was a building of a lot of layers, a lot of different colors. So, you know, quick movements, large movements, like with her whole body, you know, across such pieces of art, you know, um, kind of like a, a relaxing thing as well, the movement. Um, it was very deliberate, but, you know, fast. She had an idea in mind, um, just not sure quite what it was going to look like. Um, and she played music and read poetry in her studio. I could I could definitely see the music being a part of it, because when, when I was looking at her art, it felt very musical. Yeah, that, that kind of, um, kind of like some artists have used, you know, they hear um, when they hear music sounds, they kind of, it brings an image to their mind. Um, and she did that with the arts, with poetry and music to find a source of those colors. Um, as, uh, in the 60s and 70s, she started using blocks of colors. Um, and this is when a lot of her multi-panel large pieces uh, came to uh, be. Um, a lot of them, there was one that was over 26 feet wide. <sighs> That'd be awesome to do. And, um, just she did twenty. She she did twenty one paintings uh, shortly after her sister's death, um, and that work the cycles that she was doing the different types of work it followed landscapes about how she felt at specific times. Um, she often uses trees, flowers, and fields and bodies of water as well. Okay. Go, Mr. Jamie. Time to add the last piece. All right. This is kind of fun. I don't know exactly what I'm doing other than just really enjoying the way the pastels moving on the paper and the colors and stuff, how they're meshing together. It's, it's interesting. And yeah, during this time uh, in her life, this 67 and 80, she moved more and more towards pastels. Um, I think for a lot of the same reason, the colors are very uh, vivid, um, kind of like a smooth, buttery consistency. It's just the thing I like about pastels. Um, you know, she was first popular as an abstract expressionist. Um, as time went on, um, in the 70s and 80s, pop art was more popular and other movements. So her art kind of got featured less and less because it just wasn't really the thing that was cool at the time. Um, but even in the 80s, she uh, showed um, again in New York and Paris. And the critics still liked her, uh, you know, her art, even though it had matured. Um, and it was heroic and it still showed that same kind of 50s abstract expressionism, but it still changed over time. So a lot of artists actually, uh, critics, they don't know how to define her art in some ways because it uh, remained, you know, the same but different throughout, you know, the decades. Yeah, I could see that. Um, this like, um, when somebody said it looked, it looked like Pollock, I mean, it looks a little like Pollock, but like I, like I was saying, it's, I think it's a lot more complex than the than the, the chaos that is what Pollock is really known for. And yeah, so it's, it's for example, like her use of colors um, in the early 80s, she was diagnosed with cancer and um, in her jaw. And Oof. she was, you know, she went for therapy and was able to, um, you know, survive that. And um, her paintings though, afterwards, it kind of showed a psychological change um, because even though she had gotten, you know, better, uh, her colors kind of changed to, she had plants and sunflowers, but kind of like in a state of decay, wanting to 
showed like a little bit of sadness and things getting older and flowers dying and things like that. But also still very brightly colored because even though, you know, for example, the sunflowers still keep their yellow. Um, it's just an example of how during her life when she experienced events or shared memories on the page, um, you can sometimes see that in the movement and color as well. So she always um, tried new things and was not afraid to show, you know, expressing different ideas and different concepts and not sticking to just one, you know, palette. Well, that's cool. And that's about all I have on her. Um, obviously, there's a lot more. You can always uh, research. We have books about her and always um, online resources. Um, she's very interesting. A lot of her art looks very different. How much time do we have left, Mr. Davey? Uh, we got about a minute left until I am done with this or this panel. Um, I gotta say, uh, it feels weird starting small, then getting bigger and then bigger. And I wish I would have brought some Q-tips or maybe some rough paper towel to get some different textures out of the pastel. But you know, that's that's what art is about. It's about learning and seeing what we can make out of it. Um, and don't forget that, you know, FAM is happening in person at the library. Um, you just have to register beforehand. I so, you know, always check out that events calendar that we have. And I really don't know what I did here. But the interesting thing is, is like when you're talking about music, I was definitely thinking about music in my head and kind of like the way I, I see music moving um, when I listen to it. And I really, I'm curious to see what, what this is going to turn into as I add more and more layers to it. And I might go back and add maybe some marker, maybe some colored pencil. But it's definitely an interesting experience. Mr. Daddy, why do you have green on that piece on the farm? Right I don't know. Green just spoke to me. <laughs> um, and like always, um, please post your video or your videos, your um, the art that you make. Um, and if there's ever an artist or a school or a move, uh, an art artistic movement that you want to see us cover, you know, please let us know. We're always looking for new ideas, new artists that we've never worked with before. Um, and if that's all you have, mm -hmm. um, everybody keep making art and, um, we'll see you soon. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.